I am not a historian, but neither are you. So how about we, the people, learn this stuff together? Welcome to US 101. It's kind of weird there's a school bell. Aren't all kids on break right now? As you're watching this episode, I'm currently back home in New Jersey celebrating the holidays with my family. And since we're only a few days away from Christmas, I figured for today's episode I would focus on something very holiday-esque. <clears throat> Specifically, a key battle that took place during the Revolutionary War, and it featured some major players, guys like George Washington, and a large group of very drunk Hessians. Or so you were led to believe. I'm talking about what's known as the Battle of Trenton, which took place on December 26, 1776. And you're actually pretty familiar with this battle, via this painting right here, showing George Washington heroically crossing the frozen Delaware River. Before we go any further, I'd like to debunk something, okay? You can f right off if you actually think that George Washington was standing in the boat as his crew was paddling him across a frozen Delaware River, not to mention was also incredibly choppy because there was a really big winter storm going on that night. Now why is the Battle of Trenton important? Well, let's put it in context. At this point in time, we're about a year and a half into the Revolutionary War. The war started in April of 1775, and by this point in time, the British had been kicking the sh out of the Americans. The British had defeated George Washington in a few battles. They had chased him out of New York State, through the state of New Jersey, and into Pennsylvania. Not to mention that they'd captured quite a few American soldiers. So among the Continental Army, morale was low, there had been many losses suffered, and a few of those men were deserting the army. They didn't want to fight anymore. Which meant if Washington kept losing, the Continental Army would have been soundly defeated, the revolution pretty much would have been a lost cause, and I would be standing here doing a web series called God Save the King 101. So what did Washington try to do to boost the morale, to boost the spirits of his men at this time? Did he take him out drinking? Nope. Did he try to go and get him laid? Nope. He instead sat down and devised a military strategy on how his boys could go and defeat a garrison of Hessians that were helping the British during the war. See, sometimes when you want to raise your boys' spirits, you go and take them out fighting, especially if it's in New Jersey. Now this plan that Washington devised would have three moving parts, okay? You'd have Washington leading his 2,400 men on the main attack, while one of his generals, John Cadwallader, would lead a flanking force of 1,900 men, and then another general, John Ewing, would lead a blocking force of 700 men, essentially leading a force to surround the Hessians in Trenton, boxing them off from the rest of the group, and essentially taking them over really quickly. So when the time came to carry out this plan, Washington and his boys on Christmas night crossed the Delaware River and marched 19 miles through the frozen cold and the snow with next to no provisions on to Trenton, New Jersey. Meanwhile, Washington's generals Cadwallader and Ewing decided not to go through with their part of the plan because it was bad weather. It was really cold outside. We couldn't do... Thus proving that Washington was a bad mother... Now before we move further with the story, let's quickly address a fact that has been passed off as actual truth. It's said that prior to Washington making his moves on Trenton and the Hessian garrison, a local spy was aware of Washington's plans and ran back to the Hessian colonel, Johann Rall, to warn him of said plan and to tell him to get ready. And he writes it down on a note as well to give to the colonel. And the colonel and his men, because it's Christmas night, they're engaging in holiday merriment by drinking their faces off and getting plastered. The colonel takes the note, looks at it, goes, right, puts it in his pocket, and completely forgets about it. The Hessians get drunk as hell, they wake up the next morning, the Americans surround them and soundly defeat them, all because they were hungover. Sad to say, it's not true. It's a good story. Now, it is said that while Rawl may have received some earlier warnings of an American attack, his men were not drunk. Because they were on the move through New Jersey, by the time they got to Trenton, they were just tired, they were unprepared, and the night of the winter storm, they didn't send out a patrol of any men to look for anybody because the weather was so bad. They were like, eh, let's just hang out for the night, get some sleep, relax. And not to mention that the Hessian force in Trenton numbered about 1,400, while Washington had 2,400 men. So, tired, unprepared, and outnumbered? 
yeah, I can see where the drunk story came from. It makes more sense. No, we were we weren't we were ready. We were just we were just wasted. This was an incredibly brief and one-sided battle, by the way. How brief? It said that it started around 8 a.m. and was done by noon, which meant the guys could have woke up, had a Taylor ham, egg, and cheese on a bagel, fought, and then went and got lunch. And the Hessian stats during this battle, just embarrassing. How embarrassing? We're talking 22 of them died, 92 of them wounded, and over 900 of them captured. Not to mention the colonel, Johann Rall, fatally wounded while he was trying to rally his troops to battle. As for the Americans, very, very few losses. In fact, they only lost two men, and not due to fighting, but the two guys froze to death, and they had five soldiers wounded. One of them, coincidentally, was our future president, James Monroe, who took a musket ball to the shoulder and almost bled out. And did this battle work in raising the morale of the men? Absolutely, man. Not only did they get to take all the provisions from the Hessians, their food, their clothes, their ammunition, but it also boosted their spirits in knowing that they could actually win a fight. And the Americans would prove themselves in battle again only a few weeks later at the Battle of Princeton, where they would take on and defeat the British. But that story, that's for another episode. But thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Really do appreciate it. And thank you guys for the continued support, for subscribing to the channel, liking the videos, for sharing them. I really do appreciate it. And uh, again, please visit our Facebook page, facebook.com slash USA History 101. The link is down below in the description box. And uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic holiday coming up, whether you celebrate Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever it is. Hope you have a fantastic holiday. And uh, we're going to take off next week from US 101 just so that I can celebrate Christmas and, uh, and New Year's. So we'll be back in a couple weeks, but make sure to subscribe to the channel again. Check out the previous episodes, and uh, we are all done. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to go this way now. Farewell. Happy holidays. I'll see you guys in the new year, 2017.